Welcome back to another episode of The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about how a federal judge bumped out a class action lawsuit against Slidefire. SB Tactical, the originator of the pistol stabilizing brace, set the bar for innovation and product development in the PDW pistol category. From the insanely popular SBM4 to the adjustable SBA3 and even kits for pump action firearms, SB Tactical braces are available for a wide variety of firearm platforms in fixed, adjustable, and side folding models. To get 15% off your legally transported and carried pistol braces, use the code TGC15 over at sb-tactical.com. Before we get started, I'm running for the NRA Board of Directors and I need your help. Head on over to adamkraut.com or click the link down in the description to grab a petition and let your voice be heard. Now, back to me. Before we get started, I know how much you guys love the crush part of our opening. We want to bring you guys in on the fun. Send your best legal brief crush video to theguncollective at gmail.com for your chance to be the featured crush of the week. If we pick it, we'll send you a sweet pack of Gundamentalist stickers. Get crushing, or if you're lame, head on over to adamkraut.com to grab yours. All right, so last week, a federal judge for the District of Nevada issued an order dismissing a class action lawsuit against Slidefire Solutions, makers of those notorious bump stocks, which spawned from what happened out in Las Vegas last year. Slidefire had requested the court dismiss the action under two separate rules found in the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. The first one is a rule that governs personal jurisdiction, and because this isn't the Adam Kraut College of University for the Law School Nonprofit Incorporated of Higher Education Institute, you're just gonna have to sign up for law school on your own or check out the court's decision on pages five through 13 at the link in the description. The part we care about was under Rule 12b-6, which deals with dismissing a case when there is a failure to state a claim for which relief can be granted. You see, once upon a time in 2005, Congress enacted this law called the Protection and Lawful Commerce of Arms Act. We previously covered that on this show, and for a refresher, you can check that out by clicking here. The question that the court had to wrestle with was whether the bump stock was a qualified product. For our purposes, the statute defines the term to mean a firearm or a component part of a firearm. If the bump stock was a qualified product, it would be entitled to protection under PLACA and the case would have to be dismissed. If it weren't, the case would be permitted to continue on. While lawmakers love to give words meaning, in this particular case, they did not define the term component part, which meant the court had to do it for them. Both sides gave the court differing interpretations of what a component part was and whether a bump stock should be found to be one. Slidefire argued that they were component parts because they're a type of rifle stock and rifle stocks are necessary for a rifle to be fired from the shoulder. To support that position, Slidefire cited to ATF's guidebook, the determination letter it received from ATF, and case law which supported that position. The plaintiffs argued that they were accessories rather than component parts because they were added after the consumer purchases a fully functional rifle, requires post-purchase installation, and are advertised as a way to enhance or overhaul a rifle in Slidefire's promotional catalog. They also pointed to cases where courts have previously ruled that devices like cable locks, sights, and compensators are accessories rather than component parts of firearms, as well as federal tax regulations that the plaintiffs suggested define accessories to encompass bump stocks. The court went with Slidefire's interpretation and found the stocks to be component parts. It noted that neither party disputed that a stock was a component part of a firearm. Pointing to ATF's guidebook along with Webster's dictionary, the court stated that a stock is an integral component of a rifle as it permits the firearm to be fired from the shoulder. It also found that a bump stock was a modified rifle stock that replaces the existing part. Of particular interest was the next sentence. Thus, it follows that upon installation, the bump stock is a rifle's operative stock and therefore becomes an integral part of a rifle. While the plaintiff's argument in relation to the excise tax is an interesting one, the court cast it aside without much issue. The excise tax regulation on firearms manufacturers defined the term component parts to include items that would ordinarily be attached to a firearm during use and in the ordinary course of trade are packaged with the firearm at the time of sale by the manufacturer or importer. The plaintiffs argue that because bump stocks are not included at the time of sale and require a conversion kit for installation, 
they would be regulated as accessories. The court pointed out that same regulation also states component parts also include any part provided with the firearm that would affect the tax status of that firearm, such as an attachable shoulder stock, and found the bump stocks to be component parts. In light of that finding, PLACA requires that the court dismiss the action if none of the exemptions to PLACA apply. It seems that both sides may have neglected to mention the fact that it was possible to get a bump stock equipped rifle from the factory. The plaintiffs also threw in two arguments that one of the exemptions would apply and would put Slidefire outside the scope of PLACA's protections. The exemption allows for a suit to continue when a manufacturer or seller of a qualified product knowingly violated a state or federal statute applicable to the sale or marketing of that product and the violation was the proximate cause of the harm. Among other things, this particular exemption applies when a manufacturer or seller knowingly makes a false entry in or failed to make an appropriate entry in any record required to be kept under federal or state law with respect to that qualified product. So, what were the plaintiffs arguing SlideFire did? Well, first, that SlideFire allegedly made a false entry on its application for its FFL, and second, that SlideFire misrepresented that bump stocks were intended for persons with limited mobility to ATF. The first argument was not even addressed because it was not in the original complaint. The court found in relation to the second argument that ATF's letter to SlideFire alludes to the alleged misrepresentation, but it's not clear that that influenced ATF's conclusion at all. Further, the court found that the plaintiffs have not come forward with any authority, suggesting that a device's utility to those with disabilities impacts whether that device constitutes a firearm or firearm part. And that significantly, if a device's marketability to those with disabilities was not a factor in ATF's finding, then it follows that plaintiffs cannot show that SlideFire's misrepresentation approximately caused the injuries that are the subject of this case. So, TLDR. Slide fire stocks were found to be a component part of a firearm by the court and therefore fall under the protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. And that means the court was obligated to dismiss the case. However, due to the federal rules of civil procedure and case law in the Ninth Circus, the court gave the plaintiffs 21 days to file an amended complaint, which means the bumpy road for slide fire may not be over yet. We'll be following this one closely. That's it for this episode. If you learned anything from the show, help us out and hit that like button. Make sure you share it with your friends. Don't forget to get subscribed. And if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us via the links down in the video description. Be sure to check out the Gun Collective podcast on iTunes. And as always, thanks for watching. Bumped out a class action lawsuit against Slidefire. <laughs> I went like this too. I went. <laughs> the shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats. <laughs>